Hi there! Today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable Chocky Bee just in time for Valentine's Day. Love! He's made from some wafer biscuit, a layer of chocolate, a layer of caramel, chocolate, wafer biscuit and a little stinger of chocolate. Now before we get straight into this project, I just wanted to let you know that I have four different size bees that you can make. Um, tutorials for all of those. We've got the little, mid, big and giant size bees and they range from 28 stitches around the body to 60 stitches around the body and they're all beginner friendly patterns. For this project, you're going to need some yarn in the specific colours of wafer biscuit chocolate, caramel and cream or white, crochet hook, scissors, darning needle and a couple of pins, fibre fill, two safety eyes, a little bit of embroidery cotton for the mouth and some felt and fabric glue for the cheeks. Also optional is some nail polish if you want to paint your bee's eyes. Now the one I've got here, I made this bee from a velvet chenille yarn using a five millimetre hook. And I would say this yarn is around about a Aran weight to a bulky. So that's between a four and a five. Uh, but today I'm going to be using the milk cotton yarn, which I would say is around about a two to a three. So a sport to a DK weight and a 3.5 millimetre hook. Okay, so let's get into it. So we start with using the wafer biscuit colour, creating a magic ring. And we're going to work six single crochet stitches into that magic ring. Now, if you don't know how to create a magic ring, I do have two tutorials on my channel. One just showing you the method that I'm using here and another one which has got a bit of a hack for people who are brand new to crocheting and want to just be able to get to it quickly and simply so they're available plus I also have all the stitches that you'll need in this project they're not too many um, this is just a single crochet stitch again I have tutorial for that stitch now I'm just going to pause here to show you how we're going to join our yarn so that we keep our stripes nice and continuous with amigurumi you usually are crocheting in the round and in a spiral and so the stripes on a project like this won't be nice and straight and continuous we want them to look exactly like this nice and neat with our stripes going right around the body so what I want you to do is have a look at that very first stitch you created in the magic ring you can see there are two little loops of yarn at the top of that stitch so we're going to insert our hook under the very back loop only pick up some yarn, pull it through, and pull it through the loop on our hook. That way we have slip stitched our ending stitch to our very first stitch in that round. Now we can create our single crochet as we would normally using both of those loops. So putting the hook under both of those loops. In this pattern, we're going to be using a, an increase. So that's just two single crochet stitches in the very same space. Now I like to tighten up the magic ring after I have already transitioned joined and done maybe a couple of crochets just to make sure that the tension is really nice and even. So for this round, which is round two, we're going to increase. That's just two stitches in each of the six stitches that we created in our very first round. And at the end of this round, you'll have 12 single crochet stitches. And time to transition join to our first single crochet in that round. So hook under the back loop, picking up the yarn, pulling it through and through the loop on the hook. And now we've joined nice and neatly. Round three is a single crochet. So just getting the hook under that very first stitch. Now sometimes you've got to play around with it a little bit and just get your hook under there. I like to think it's kind of just persuading the stitch. So um, yes, so round three is single crochet and an increase. And you repeat that pattern uh, six times round, giving you 18 stitches. Thank you. 
and transition. And we're up to round four, which is two single crochets and, in, and one increase, repeating that pattern six times around, giving you 24 stitches. And round five. Transition, and it's three single crochet stitches, one increase, six times round, giving you 30 stitches. Now also, at any time I'm going too fast, just remember that little note on the top of the screen here that YouTube can slow this down or speed it up for you. I've also, if you're an experienced crocheter and amigurumi uh, maker, um, you don't need to listen to me rabbit on about a whole lot of stuff. You can probably just mute this and all of the pattern, all of the information that you need will appear on the screen for you. I've tried to make this as uh, beginner friendly as I can, but there's probably a whole lot of information that you don't need to be listening to. So now we're up to round six, which is four single crochet stitches, one increase six times and that gives you 36 stitches And on to round seven and eight, which is single crochet around. So no increases, we're just doing a single crochet on each of the stitch spaces that you have there, giving you 36 stitches at the end of both of those rounds. Now th these will be the last rounds in the wafer biscuit until we get to the bees behind. And um, then we'll change to the chocolate color where it starts to get more interesting. If you're enjoying this video and you're finding it helpful, I really appreciate if you hit the like button and also consider subscribing for some more fun craft content. It really inspires me to keep doing what I'm doing and share free patterns and tutorials with you. So at the end of round eight, you should have eight rounds. So just check, you can never count too many times when you're doing amigurumi or crochet in general, just to make sure that you are on track. And now we've got the three rounds of chocolate that we're going to be adding. So what I want you to do is just trim off the yarn because you won't be needing that until we get to the behind and grab your next color or your dark chocolate in this case. Now what I want you to do is undo the very last stitch. So don't transition join, we're going to undo that last stitch in round eight. And I'm going to show you how to change your color without making it obvious on the finished piece. So what we're going to do is half do our single crochet in the last round. So we've pulled our yarn through but we're not going to complete that stitch. I want you to wrap around the next color, so the chocolate color around the hook, and then pull it through and complete that stitch. Then we transition join using the new color, in this case chocolate, and do our first single crochet in the next round, so in round nine. Now, behind your work, you can just tighten, just firm them up. Not, don't pull them too tight because it'll be very obvious and the stitch will look different. So you want to firm them up and then tie uh, a couple of knots. Now you don't have to do this, but I like to make sure that it's all nice and secure. If you know me, and I've spoken about this before, I'm a bit obsessed with um, tying knots and sticky tape. So 
that's something I like to do. So I've just tied the knots, trimmed that excess yarn, and now we're ready to get on to rounds 9, 10, and 11, which are all just single crochet around. Don't forget your transition joins, but we're doing a single crochet around with 36 stitches. Does anyone else here love dark chocolate like I do? This is such a yummy colour. At the end of round 11, you want to trim your yarn and take your next colour yarn, which is the caramel colour. And we're going to join using that very same method that we just did with the dark chocolate transition and now oh yeah don't forget to knot the tails don't forget to knot the tails and trim the excess And on to rounds 12 to 16, which are simply single crochet all the way around, 36 stitches each round of that yummy, delicious caramel. Now, I know I'm not the only one, but I absolutely love chocolate and anything sweet. So if you do too, please comment as to what is your favorite chocolatey treat to have. I love things like uh, chocolate eclairs, uh, bullets. I don't know if you have them in other countries, but in Australia we have chocolate bullets which are licorice coated in chocolate. Yum! Oh, and lid chocolate and Mars bars too. Yum! And at the end of round 16, we're going to trim the caramel yarn and join the chocolate back on for another three rounds of the chocolate colour. So we do our transition. Again, don't forget to firm up the tails of yarn at the back and tie them in a couple of knots and trim them. Yes, you know the drill. And now that we have our chocolate yarn rejoined for our last chocolatey stripe, Round 17, 18 and 19, we'll just be working single crochet all the way around, which is 36 stitches in each of those rounds. And if you're getting value out of this video, I really appreciate it if you hit the like button, consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you don't miss out on any more of my free tutorials in the future. Oh, phew, finished that third round. Time to trim the chocolate yarn and just admire how gorgeous your little chocky bee is turning out. I'm sure you're absolutely blitzing this project. And that join is sensational. If you're a beginner, no one would know. You've done such a great job. Well done. And on to creating your bee's cute little face. So if you're using safety eyes, this is the time I'd like to just check the size and placement. Um, keep your join at the very bottom of the bee. So even though it's not an obvious join every time you go around and do your transition, you can still see it. So you want to make disguise that as much as possible. So keep it right at the bottom of your work. So I'm just placing the eyes that I thought would be the right size four stitches out from the center and in line with the center or perhaps maybe a fraction um, higher than the center point of that magic ring that we started with. The larger bee that I've just shown you uh, with the chenille yarn, I ended up using a 14 millimeter um, safety eye for that one, which is about three fifths of an inch. Um, and with the bee that I'm showing you here in the tutorial, I sort of changed my mind and, and ended up going with a 10 millimeter safety eye, which is two fifths of an inch. 
So what I like to do, because I'm going to colour the eyes, the safety eyes for this bee, um, just to make it more uh, um, sort of chocolatey and matching, is I use this big revolting blob of blue tack that I keep in my craft drawer for this type of thing. Um, I can sit the safety eyes into it. I don't actually have to hold them while they're drying. So I stick the safety eyes into it matching the chocolatey colour with the nail polish that I've got um, to the darkest colour on my bee and I give that a, um, each eye a, a fairly generous coating of the nail polish. I let that dry and then I give it a second coat just to make sure that it's really um, smooth and glossy and, and nicely finished. While the eyes are drying, we can get onto the antennas. So I want you to cut two lengths of yarn, approximately two feet long or 60 centimeters long. And I'm using the darker color here. This is, these are for the antennas. So you choose the color that you would like your antennas um, to be. You don't actually even have to have antennas, but I've better show you how to make them. Okay, so you want to create a slip knot in the middle of each of those lengths of yarn and put that on your hook. So we're going to do a variation of a chain here. Using one tail, I want you to put it over the top of the hook and just hold your finger there so that it holds the yarn in place, otherwise it'll slip around on the hook. And use the other tail to then do a chain. So you're wrapping the yarn around the hook and then pulling it through those two loops that were on the hook. We're gonna repeat that. So yarn over, the yarn tail over, hold it in place, wrap the other yarn round and through over then wrap the other yarn through okay so i'm going to show you with both of these so that you can um, get the gist of what it is that i'm doing you want to create five of these in total five of these sort of chain stitches but pull the last tail of yarn through so you end up with these cute little antennas that have a natural curl in them which is what we want okay let's do that again so you put a slip knot in the middle of your length of yarn and put the slip knot on your hook. Hold your finger onto that, onto that loop. Use the front tail to wrap over the hook, the other tail to wrap over the hook and pull through those two loops. four and on the fifth one we pull that all the way through there we go so this is a really handy stitch if you have a project where you want to use a chain stitch and it's not quite thick enough this is perfect let's add the mouth so with the larger B, I've gone two rounds out from that uh, magic ring center to create a nice little smiley mouth. But on my smalls B, I've done a funny little mouth with a chocolate dribble down it. So be creative. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Um, I'm just showing you a simple way and yeah, it's up to you how you want to make your B's expression. Express yourself with your B. So I'm using some uh, embroidery cotton or embroidery thread, which is a five strand cotton in the dark chocolate to match my dark chocolate and the eyes. Thread it onto a needle and I'm going to use double uh, thickness here because it's not very, very thick. But you could just use yarn and in hindsight, I probably should have because I end up thickening the mouth anyway. So I've decided to go with just one round out from the magic ring to give it a really cute little smile. Remember again to keep all your transition joins at the bottom part of your project. So it minimizes being able to see it. Bring through the thread from the back. Don't pull it all the way through because it will just pull through. You need to hold your finger on the back to keep it in place. Now I'm going back through the other side of where my smile will be. So I've come out on one end, one corner of my smile and gone back in on my other corner of my smile. Now to keep it in place, I'm gonna fix it in three points here just by coming out in a stitch space, 
wrapping that around the little smiley yarn, taking it back into the back. And I'll repeat that in two more places. This will just fix that little curve of the thread into the smile position so it won't move. And then when you're happy with that, when you get into the position that you're happy with, then you can just, dare I say it, tie some more knots, get the two tails of your thread and tie them together and trim the excess yarn. Now I decided that because of how thin my embroidery cotton is that it needs to be thickened up. So I'm just going fast here. This is just me thickening up the little smile. And if I'd used yarn, this would not have been an issue. Anyway, in the end, it looks really cute and I'm really happy the way, with how it's come out. Knots, yay! Okay, if you're using safety eyes, now's the time to just add those in. Don't put the backs on yet because once they're in place, they're in place for life. So just place them and and make sure you get them in, a, in the right sort of um, position for knowing that you're going to be adding cheeks later and also that we're going to be adding those antennas. So you just want to keep that flexible at this point. So as a guide, you can count up six stitches from the magic ring center and that's where we're going to be putting our antennas. I like to leave about four stitches between them and get it central to the face. So when you work that where you want to put that first antenna, bring your hook in from behind and keeping the little antenna on its natural curve, you want to bring in one of the tails. Yep, that looks pretty good. And then go one stitch across, bring your hook out there and pull through the other tail. Okay, so we'll just have a look at that. It looks pretty good. Now we're going to count four stitches across and insert our hook to come out of that stitch space and pull through the other tail of the second antenna. Again, remember to keep that curl so it goes under, unless you want to change it and you're quite welcome to do that. And then one stitch across from it pull through the other tail. Now just have a look at the, how the whole face is coming together at this point. I, even though that's where I usually put the antennas, I decided I wanted to try something different with this one. So I moved them down around uh, one round and then um, I think I made them only three stitches apart. Um, <laughs> kind of like fat little eyebrows, but they're kind of cute. So I decided that's where I wanted them to be and I was happy with the eye placement and the antennas. So I popped on the little backs for the safety eyes and I get to play with more knots. Yay. So I'm just tying the two tails together in a couple of knots to keep the antennas in place. They will not come out. Trim the yarn and that's your face. Almost done, but it's still got my little heart cheeks to add, but we're nearly there. With the face done, we can get back to crocheting the bee's body. So we're going to be changing our chocolate colour to the wafer biscuit colour to uh, finish the bee's behind. Then transition. And then on to round 20 and it'll be single crochet in that uh, biscuit color all the way around, which is 36 stitches. Even though you might be using the exact colors that I'm using for my tutorial for your particular bee project, don't forget next time you try a pattern, and remember I have four different bee patterns, that you can make it personalized and change it to whatever you want it to be. Don't be afraid to change the color scheme of your bee or make it longer, make it shorter, add a bigger stinger, don't put a stinger on there, make accessories for it, it's up to you. You can color theme your bee and make it whatever you want it to be. 
So yeah, have fun with it. Okay, we're on to round 21, which is the first of our decreasing rounds. So you're gonna work four single crochets and then a decrease. And you're gonna repeat that six times round. So to do your decrease, what we're going to do is put our hook under the front loops of the next two stitches. One and two. Wrap the yarn around our hook, pull it through those two stitches, yarn around the hook and through the remaining two stitches. So we'll do that again. So four single crochets. And now we're going to do a decrease. Front loops only of the next two stitches. Pick them up with your hook. Wrap the yarn around your hook. Pull it through those two stitches. Yarn around your hook through the remaining two stitches. Now this is known as an invisible decrease and you'll barely see how two stitches have become one in your finished project. Round 22, you'll be working three single crochets, then a decrease, repeating that pattern six times round, reducing it down to 24 stitches in that round. And just a little reminder, if I was going too fast to show you how to do that invisible decrease, remember that you can slow down this video in YouTube by selecting the playback speed. Now at this stage, I like to just create my transition join and then fill my B with the first line of fibre fill. Don't overfill your B yet because you don't want to get the fibre fill too close to where you're working with um, the closing up of your B's behind. When you're crocheting and you've got fibre fill there, it's very easy for the hook to start pulling through some of those fibres and it, then it makes your work look fluffy and, and yeah, not very nice. So try and keep the fibre fill away as much as you can from where you're crocheting. And even when I crochet from here on after I've put my first lot of fill in, I like to use my fingers to sort of keep the, uh, the fill down at a level that is away from the hook. So you can see here by putting my middle finger on my left hand, I'm just putting it, pushing the fibre fill down a little bit so it doesn't get caught up in my stitches. And round 23, you'll be working two single crochets, one decrease, repeating that six times, and that will give you a total of 18 stitches for that round. And now to add a little bit more fibre fill to your bee, again, keeping it away from where you're crocheting, try and push it to the sides and make sure that um, behind curve is being filled up nicely. And on to round 24, which will be one single crochet and one decrease, repeating that six times round. Now it'll get down to 12 stitches and if you're new to crocheting you'll probably find that this is actually starting to get a little trickier doing the decreases when you've got something filled with fibre fill but just persevere with it because um, it's well worth it you're nearly you're right at the pointy end <laughs> yeah not long to go now Okay, so if you're going to add a stinger, now's the time to change over to the chocolate coloured yarn. If you're not, and you want to make a um, make it rounded behind, and matching those little heart cheeks that we're going to be adding on, what you could do is just finish it in the biscuit colour, and then add a big red heart for his behind. Now, I'll put the continuation pattern up on the top left-hand screen if you want to continue and just make it rounded without a stinger. And for those of you who would like to add the stinger, what we're going to do is decrease those two stitches but don't finish it off of the last round. Pull the chocolate yarn through and transition over to our first uh, 
Dad's stitch space. And we're no, 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 we're not going to do that. I want you to stop. What we're going to do is because we're going to decrease all the way around this round, undo. You want to pick up the front loop of the next two stitches. So picking those front two loops up, using the chocolate yarn to decrease. Yeah, that's it. So you want to do that all the way around is we've got six um, decreases for this round, which will take you down to six little stitches. This is your last chance to add a little bit of fibre fill. So if you need a little bit more uh, stuffing in the behind, go for it. Remember that anything that you do stuff with fibre fill does um, become squishier over time. It does kind of uh, compress like it does in a pillow. So don't make it too um, underfilled. That's decreasing all the way around. It is a little tricky, but just take your time with it. So that's six decreases. And then you're going to transition. And then just work six single crochets around. Again, a little tricky in this last, um, the last section of this B. And then once you finish round 26, just finish with a slip knot or by um, slip stitching to the very first stitch in that round. And then you can trim your yarn and we're going to sew the stinger up. So thread the yarn tail onto a needle and what I like to do is go through each of those six remaining stitches just from behind, just sewing through those and then drawing the um, tail together which will actually bring all those stitches together to a nice little point. And by putting your needle in through uh, the chocolate part of the stinger, like backwards and forwards a few times, it'll secure it into place and then hide the tail of the yarn back in through to the bee's body and trim off any excess if you need to. The bee is looking absolutely adorable, but we want it to look stunning. So I want you to cut out two hearts out of the felt and glue them onto his little cheeks using some fabric craft glue. If you haven't created the stinger on your bee, you'll need to cut out a larger heart out of felt and glue that to his behind. Now on to making your bee's wings, otherwise he can't fly. So grab your cream or white yarn and your hook. And for our first wing, round one, we're going to create a magic ring, but leaving enough of a tail too, so that you can sew your finished wing to your bee. And now we're going to work seven single crochets around that magic ring. That's seven single crochets.
For round two, you're going to increase in every one of those seven single crochets you just created. So that will give you a total of 14 stitches by the time you get to the end of round two. And on to round three, which is our last round of the wing. So transition, and we're going to increase in the first stitch. And then work 12 single crochets. which will give you one last uh, stitch to work into and I want you to increase in that one. So you'll end up with 16 stitches around there. Now, here comes a trick. There's a little gap. Every time we do a transition, there's a, a strange little gap between our last stitch and our first stitch we created. What I want you to do is do a single crochet into that weird space and then slip stitch to the very first single crochet you created in round three. Cut off enough yarn to be able to stitch it onto your B. Now we don't want our B to fly around in circles, so we better make a second wing. Now using a couple of pins, safety pins, uh, you can use a bobby pin like a hair clip or even just a piece of yarn, mark out the centre of your bee's face and continue that line along the centre of the bee's back. That's just going to help us with placement of the wings, make sure that we've got them central. So thread the centre tail of yarn from one wing, so where you started your magic ring and move it across to the edge of the wing. Now I'm just going to stitch my wing in place central to my caramel stripe and about one or two stitches away from the pin. Stitch the wing in place securely and then when you're finished with that particular piece of yarn, that tail, um, Thread the other tail and do the same thing. This just keeps it nice and secure and also you won't have either of those tails sort of showing because what we're going to do is uh, tighten them together like, <laughs> yes, knot them together and um, then hide the tails into the bee's body and then that, that way there's no way the wing is going to come off and the tails of yarn will be completely hidden inside the bee's body. And repeat the same process for attaching the other wing. Hey, you're adorable. B, you're so beautiful. C, you're a cutie full of charm. I love how this bee turned out. Apart from it making me hungry and put on some kilos, I absolutely adore it. But what does my little dog Piglet think about them? Let's see what Piglet thinks.
Well, I think that piglets found love. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and a little bit of fun too. If you did, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to show your support. I would really appreciate it. I wish you all a fantastic Valentine's Day and remember to stay awesome.